first up, we've got Thomas Wong, who has actually given a Talmo talk before, uh, but uh, this time he's here to talk about where is the 4x speed button. Thomas. Okay. All right. So I'll uh, get my screen shared, and we can uh, we can get rolling. Um, okay. So hopefully things are sharing properly. Yes. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome, you know, for having me back again. Uh, today, I'm joined with by my uh, co-conspirator, uh, Kylian Ong, who is uh, my colleague in Malaysia. So it's uh, late in the evening for him. Uh, <laughs> um, so our little project, this is something we did uh, over the last academic year. And uh, the point of this is that we're, we're kind of both new academics and want to do something that's practical, that uh, if you wish, you can take away today and have it implemented by September. Um, and we'll kind of show you what we did and, uh, and hopefully you'll see that, yeah, it can be done. So, uh, so here's the setting. Um, obviously everyone has moved on to online teaching, uh, at Harriet Watt, uh, we've been given some university level guidance on what that should look like for students. And the two key pieces of information that kind of resonated with us is that there should be an AF focus on asynchronous learning and that content should be delivered in more bite-sized units. So our take home message from that is that we should not just be recording lectures and dumping them online. So we have to do a little bit more, uh, a little bit more than that. And the subject that we're talking about is uh, a, linear, a linear algebra subject. Um, over two campuses in Edinburgh and Malaysia, we've got about 350 students. Um, in Edinburgh, it's taken by second year students, both in mathematics and actuarial uh, maths. And in Malaysia is taken by first year actuarial math students. So you can see there's a pretty diverse cohort here, pretty large cohort. So we have to kind of be smart about uh, what we do. And in comes Kyle and myself, uh, first time lecturers. This is the first time we're both taking this subject. Um, both Kyle and I are relatively new academics to, uh, to Harriet Watt. So when we were taking on this subject, uh, a key question that we thought was, you know, how can we make this manageable? Um, how do we kind of create a subject, you know, within the three months that's fitting, that's still for the students? And obviously as subject leader, my first thought is to kind of just make Kylan do everything, right? Um, but somehow he wasn't quite happy with that. Uh, so we had to move on to plan B. And yeah, so, yeah, I, can, I talk about our way. So uh, <laughs> they are, yeah, there were two main considerations during our planning stage. Uh, first is we want to make sure that we are realistic. It is important that our approach in the course designs uh, needs to be pragmatic, both in terms of time constraints and also the technology involved, right? We ensure that our expectation can be met with little to no additional effort, while compared to the traditional face-to-face -face approach. Uh, second, compared to the usual situation, we feel like uh, we sort of expect students to be insecure and feeling isolated in this mode of learning. We wish to ensure good student learning experience from students from both campuses by building in engagement bits here and there. Yep, that's, uh, yeah, that's, abs that's absolutely right. Uh, we wanted to make sure that this can be done without kind of you know, uh, spending all our time in the summer doing it. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, presenting a class, um, the kind of the most obvious way we thought was kind of do videos. Um, and you can see videos are a great way to deliver information because they're simple, they're easy to produce, they're easy to edit. Um, it doesn't require a lot of technological kind of expertise to either create or edit or from the student's point of view, it doesn't require a lot of technology to view and engage with those videos. And uh, for a lot of uh, mathematicians, I imagine that's kind of their first uh, approximation to what an online asynchronous lecture would look like is to produce videos. Um, but there are a lot of cons as well. So it's not really an online lecture in the sense that, you know, it's not really a lecture because uh, as everyone knows, videos is a one directional medium. I am just yelling into the void and not knowing what happens. Um, and from the student's point of view, it's very passive. They just sit there and we expect them to absorb the video, which is why, you know, uh, usually what the students do when they engage a new system is to find, well, where is that speed button? How do I make my lecturer talk four times as quickly? or two times as quickly, uh, you know, as, as it allows. Um, and in a teaching team, like with Kylie and myself, when there are multiple teaching staff, it often lacks continuity because the, uh, the typical divide is that, all right, Kylie, you do the first half, I'll do the second half of the subject. So there's often a break in between and there's no kind of continuity in, uh, in the flow of the subject. And for me personally, um, it's really dull to record. 
uh, alone. So if I'm recording by myself, I'm just yelling at my screen and it gets recorded. <laughs> um, so, uh, so an obvious solution to this is to bring in more people, is to kind of spread the suffering around, bring in Kylin, rope in a student, and just, you know, make everyone suffer together. Um, and Kylin may have something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to talk about my initial thoughts on uh, Thomas' idea. So when, when he first suggested this in early, late June last year, I was pretty excited with the idea and happy to try it out. I think involving students in course design is always innovative and the result could be very fruitful, but at the same time, as that was really our first collaboration, I was a bit concerned on how things will go, but I guess eventually it was an amazing experience and I believe that's for both of us, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so kind of to kind of convince you that this is something you can do, uh, take away now and kind of have implemented by September. Um, actually, uh, a year ago, Kylie and I have not met each other. Uh, our first meeting uh, was late June. I think it was like June 20th or something. Um, and then that's when we kind of, uh, I guess that brings me on to my next page. Um, that's when we really sat down and we said, okay, how do we design the subject? How many units do we need? How many videos do we need? And uh, that's when we kind of sent out an email to recruit a student volunteer. Um, and the way we did that was uh, just to say, hey, uh, I emailed the students in the first year cohort. So students actually moving, about to move into the subject and asked, hey, is there anyone who wants to kind of do this project with us? And then around July and August, that's when we sat down and we did the recordings. Uh, we did it uh, in three or four videos each uh, over two hours. Um, and because of the time difference between Malaysia and uh, Edinburgh, our sweet spot is nine to 11 in the morning UK time. Um, and then in August, once we have kind of an idea of what the videos are going to do, what they kind of cover, then we kind of build out the rest of the subject using the materials that we had and filling in kind of whatever gaps we needed. Um, so thankfully uh, for us, when I sent out that email at the end of June, we had a volunteer in Emma. Um, so uh, when Emma came on board, uh, we were very excited because um, her, first, her first reaction, her first, uh, her first response to me was that, uh, Tom, uh, I am not a very bright student. Uh, you know, I'm a pretty slow learner. Is that going to be okay? Uh, to which, you know, we respond, yeah, that's great. That is kind of the student that we want, your typical average student. And the reason for that is because we're going to be discussing topics, uh, the three of us, uh, we're going to talk about the topics and Emma, as a student, as your average student, gives us yet another way uh, for students to engage with the content. This three member dynamic is, I mean, this is not innovative. This is, this is something that happens in podcasts all the time, where an expert, a moderator, and a novice will be discussing a topic. And the mm -hmm. idea here is that it gives the audience a point of entry, regardless of their expertise or understanding of the topic. So students, they may relate to Emma. The really bright students may relate more to Kylin, who is the moderator. And I'll talk a little bit about the roles. Um, so in the, in the setup, in the preparation, so me, uh, I will be presenting just like I would with a, with a lecture. And, uh, and Kylin, he would come in and he, him, he is an expert in linear algebra. He's, he's a teacher, uh, but he's never seen me present linear algebra. So he would act more as a moderator. He would come in with extra explanation, extra clarification, and he would correct my mistakes. And as everyone in the chat will know, um, he's the more grounded one, right? So he, he's the one who kind of has to bring me back in line when I get too sidetracked. Um, yeah, I think basically my presence was to sort of make the sessions to be like less formal or more conversation based. I, I want to add on a bit like, actually we sort of compensate each other in some sense where uh, Thomas will be focused on the bigger picture while I was moderating uh, the details bits in each of the topics. And the fact that we sort of correct each other mistakes, I think this sort of add values by letting students know that uh, we lecturers are not sort of perfect human being and reflecting on us to be someone who are actually approachable. And this is very important aspects in this online learning world, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So what you're seeing now uh, in, in this presentation, kind of how we present. So I would be kind of taking the bulk of the presentation and Kylie would be jumping in with his inside, his uh, interpretations as well. We actually asked Emma to, to see if she wanted to come in on this call with us, uh, but she very smartly said no, she wanted a proper summer break. So, you know, you can't fault her for that. Um, but, uh, but so Emma, in her role, uh, we encourage her to ask questions, but we're also very careful. We, uh, the reason why we had three of us was to ensure that Emma never felt alone. Uh, as a student going through this subject. So if you look at the timeline, 
uh, she is effectively going through this subject at four times the speed at, as what a normal student would without the scaffolding, without all the supporting material. So she is an absolute champ for going through it. And with Kylin in the mix, uh, Kylin is kind of more always on her side. So um, she was kind of comfortable asking questions and seeking clarification. And so that's kind of a, that's kind of the role of Kylin as well to moderate, to kind of be on the side of Emma. So she never uh, felt isolated. Uh, a big applause to Emma. I think she did really great. And she is basically representing the whole cohort from both campuses to ask questions in the recording. Yeah, so uh, I saw, I'm seeing a question in chat now. So uh, Emma is actually going through this, was about to go through the subject. So she was moving in from uh, year one into year two. So she would be a student going through a subject. So she would have to listen to her own recordings. Um, so she's not done this subject before. This will be her first time. Um, so in terms of technology, uh, we went with, uh, you know, Teams meeting because Harry Watt uses Teams. So we just started Teams meeting, screen shared. I use OneNote to kind of write down all my notes. And the idea here is that uh, the notes we made available through OneNote to the students. So as they're going through the video, they can actually see all the notes in front of them. If they want to annotate, uh, they can. Later on, if they want to review, they don't have to look at the video. They just go straight to the OneNote and see a copy of the notes. Um, this was a deliberate choice. Uh, we went with a low tech option. Uh, one take, we didn't post processing, no cutting, no editing. It was just a one take. So uh, our mistakes, our goof ups, our jokes are uh, all recorded. So uh, the idea is to give it kind of a more authentic feel, uh, just like they would uh, in the lecture. Um, so after we've kind of created most of the videos, uh, we had to put everything together. Um, and so what we did on Blackboard was to kind of, for each unit, uh, we created kind of one of these pages where um, there would be a quick blurb on this is what you're expected to learn or what we're covering, some learning objectives, you know, to master the topic, you, have, you should be able to do kind of A, B, and C, and then the video. So the video is the student's first engagement with the topic. That's they look at the video um, and, uh, and kind of get a feel for what the topic is about, some simple examples, some motivation, the key here is to make the, con uh, the course notes make sense. Because as students, um, sometimes uh, when you look at the, the uh, lecture notes, it really doesn't really make sense. You really need an expert to give you the big picture. And that's the, uh, that's the role of the video. And then at the end, there's some tutorial exercises for them to try. Um, I'm gonna see another question uh, in the, uh, here in the chat. Um, yes, uh, at every point we, we told Emma that this is voluntary. Um, and that, you know, she could, you know, withdraw, you know, if she wanted to at any point. Um, so uh, there is this back and forth, there is this communication. We always checked in with Emma to make sure that she was okay. If she had any questions um, or if she had any suggestions uh, to let us know and that we would kind of incorporate those as well. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of how the unit came together. And uh, like I said, you know, um, as the leader, I can kind of do all the easy bits and now I can, uh, just uh, ask Kylin to do all the hard bits. Now that we've done all this, what have we learned? So uh, Kylin, would you like to take over? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the remaining two slides. Uh, <laughs> so from the core theme point of view, I think uh, one of the highlights of our practices is the results of uh, dynamic team compositions. So obviously the video which involves students, it served as a starting point of our course team development as that was really our first time work together. The connection we made during the recording sessions helped us to work closely on the subsequent development on a subject, for instance, facilitating the discussion board. In particular, there were a few successes in our discussion board. Apart from the fantastic participation rate, one of them is we are very glad to see students from both campuses, Edinburgh and Malaysia, providing peer support to each other. Like, for example, they help each other answering their queries. And this sort of creates a community of practices amongst our students. We also involve teaching assistants in helping out our marking by using an assessment tool called GradeScope, which is very user-friendly in terms of vertical marking, which is important when uh, the cohort in include uh, two campuses or above. This ensures consistencies uh, in terms of marking across both campuses. In terms of the live sessions, we are using the same team page for conducting our live sessions in different time zones. What we did is uh, we complement the content of each other's sessions, and this is to cover increase the coverage as we could refer them to each other recordings when appropriate. 
results in a more effective and diverse way of delivery content. Uh, next transition. So I want to highlight about uh, Emma as a student champion. I feel like one of the strengths that we have in face-to-face -face sessions is that we can observe the class dynamic and environment from time to time to know whether students demonstrating understanding on the topic or not. So this is clearly a disadvantage in pre-record knowledge transfer videos. And one benefit of having Emma involved in the recording session is to a certain extent address this issue. So Emma as a student champion, she acts as a pace setter from the design perspective. She slowed down the pace of content delivery, discussion, and also seek for more clarification whenever she feel like uh, things could be further elaborate or explained. Uh, besides, having Emma constantly provide feedback to us during the recording period is pretty helpful. It helps us to identify potential issue. For example, the pacing of the course, uh, the weightage of material involved, and also like the length of recordings. Right, so uh, the final slide. A few survey has been circulated in last academic year, and the feedback on the course team are overwhelmingly positive. More than 75 responses from both campuses mentioned explicitly that they found the video to be engaging and useful. I just raised out a few summary points of the responses. So students resonate with Emma questions and feel like it is very helpful to have her asking questions in the recording. They agree that the interaction in the videos were able to imitate the learning environment of an actual classroom. This sort of makes students to feel less isolated when studying alone at their respective location. Lastly, the student mentioned that overall, there is a high level of engagement throughout their learning journey in our course. And this is indeed a positive result extended from the connection we established in the collaborative video. Yep. So yeah. So uh, I think I think this is a good point to end. Is that uh, the the results were very positive, and the students really appreciate that Emma was asking the questions that they wanted to ask um, when they look at the video. So I think that was kind of the key takeaway. Is that with Emma, uh, it wasn't that much more work, but the results were just amplified and made it infinitely better. So um, we'll we'll I guess we'll wrap it up here. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I see some questions in the chat, so I'll get to those. Uh, you know, during the next chat uh, talk, I guess. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for that. Yes, let's uh, do a, a round of applause there. Um, yes, sorry, I, I hadn't realised Kylin was there as well. So that's, that's, that's a bit of a surprise. Thank you very much for coming along, Kylin. Yeah, it is like 8 p.m. now, but yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's great. It's fantastic. I, I, I didn't know you were going to be here. Um, well, we do have about a, a minute or two for, for any quick questions, but um, there, was, there was a question in, in the chat and uh, if people could put questions into the Q&A, there's a little um, bubble thing for put in there so we can keep track of them and um, be able to, to uh, deal with them. Because if they go in the chat, then they can be missed. But somebody did ask a question about accessibility. Maybe I could quickly um, ask Yes. That. So because we, did our, because we did our recordings in Teams, uh, Teams has a uh, auto captioning uh, ability. So then if needed, we could go back in and just kind of make the small tweaks um, that needed that was kind of not captioned correctly uh, as we needed to. So we did not have to generate everything from scratch, thankfully. Um, I guess the other question that might be of interest is how we recruited Emma. Um, so if you want to recruit a student, what we did was uh, I got a mailing list of all the students uh, from, and who's in first year about to enter second year. So students who's about to enter linear algebra. And then I just emailed that mailing list and say, uh, we have this project. This is what we wanted to do. Um, if you are interested, uh, you know, message me back and I can, and we can have a chat and I can tell you more about the details of what you wanted to do. Um, and again, we were just continuously talking to Emma, keeping the communications open about how she was feeling and, uh, and kind of, uh, whether she had any suggestions on how we can make things better. So. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, maybe we should move along. So thank you very much, uh, for that. Um,